Let's add these amazing custom tools to Minecraft with Forge. Let's see how it's done. Adding tools at the first moment might seem a little bit daunting, but it's actually not that bad. It of course depends how many different sets of tools you want to add. In this case, we're going to add amethyst tools to the game. An amethyst sword, pickaxe, shovel, an axe, and a hoe. Now for this, while we could start any mod items, we're actually going to create a new class. In the item package, right click new Java class. This is going to be an enum. This is going to be called the mod item tier, exactly like this. And this will implement I item tier from net Minecraft item. And we can then hover over this and say implement methods. All of those methods are going to be implemented. And as you can see, it has added some methods as well as this semicolon. Now the semicolon is very important because this is actually an enum and not just a class. So the idea is once we're done with implementing this enum, we can actually implement our different mod items right here. And we can see an example. So if we middle mouse button click on the I item tier and then press control H, we can see that there is an item tier class as well. And if we open this, then you can see this is the way that Minecraft has it set up. So these are the items tiers wood stone iron diamond gold and netherite with all of their respective fields actually implemented so the harvest level max use item efficiency damage and intuitability and then last but not least an ingredient so this would be the ingredient that you could use to repair this item and then you also have immediately the way of taking a look at what are the default values for the default item tiers are so you can place your item tier between something above something or wherever you want basically right, but let's first of all implement this the great thing is that we can basically go into the item tier and basically copy over the entirety of all of the fields because they're always going to be the same. Now we are going to get errors. This is because they're final and they're not being assigned currently. We can fix this by simply hovering over one of them, add constructor parameter, and then making sure that we actually select all of them. We can actually select everything by simply holding shift and then selecting the bo most bottom one, then everything in between and those ones get selected and then hit OK. It will then generate a constructor for us, which will immediately assign Assign all of the fields here on its own. The only thing we need to change is this shouldn't be a lazy value, this should be a supplier. And then in here, we're actually going to create a new lazy value with the repair material given as its parameter. We'll also need to return all of those, so return max uses, efficiency, attack damage, harvest level, enchantability, repair material, dot get value. Very important, this has to be get value because we're saving this in a lazy value and then we have to get the actual value to return this. Now the entire enum is set up. You can of course also download this in the description below. There is a GitHub repository as well as the code just blankly so you can copy it over. All available for your convenience. And once this is done, we can now add our amethyst mod item tier. We'll do this in front of the semicolon and this is going to be called amethyst. And then we can simply put in some parentheses and instead of those, we have to actually, we'll actually have to create this. So this is a call to the mod item tier constructor. Let's just go through. Let's say, let's say a harvest level of three. Let's say max uses is 150. A four float efficiency with an attack damage of let's say 12 and then an enchantability of 10. And then last but not least, a supplier of an ingredient. We can simply call ingredient dot from items. And then we can simply pass in mod items dot amethyst dot get. Now, if you want to add additional ones, very important, comma, and then add the new one. So for example, we could get the Firestone one. And then just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to copy the inners here. So it's very important that the last one ends with a semicolon and before a comma. I've seen this multiple times that people get a little bit confused with this. If you're not that familiar with Java, it can happen from time to time, but just so you know. Right now, in terms of the actual values, you have to play around with those, especially when it comes to balance. If you want to have a nice balance, then of course, those need to be tweaked. So for example, this is a little bit crazy. So 12 attack damage is way better than netherite, but it also has only like 150 uses. So maybe that's not too bad. This, of course, is just as an example. You can, of course, tweak your values however you like. And now that we're done with this, back to the mod items we go. And in the mod items class, we will now start to actually implement this. Let's actually take the Firestone because that's gonna be a little bit easier and then start with this. So amethyst underscore sword. This is of course an amethyst underscore sword in the name as well. And then here we will make it a sword item. Now the sword item, first of all, as you can see, takes an item tier. So this is going to be the mod item tier dot amethyst. Then it takes an attack damage. So this is additional attack damage. So let's say, 
for example, 2F, and then an attack speed, let's do 3F, and then the normal item properties. So the attack damage is actually an integer, so this is going to be 2. Now, very important that we don't have any max damage in here. You can, by the way, also put in default max damage. This will then, however, override the max uses that you have put inside of your item tier. If you want the normal sword like this, then this would be the setup. You can also take a look at how Minecraft registers the swords by putting the cursor over the sword item and pressing Alt F7. And then we can see, if we look at this, how the vanilla swords are made sword item. We have the item tier, then a then attack and a speed. So usually a sword has an additional attack damage of three, as well as a negative 2.4 attack damage. Now ours is way faster. This once again is something that you just need to play around with a little bit. And let's add the rest of the tools. So this is the pickaxe, changing the name here to pickaxe as well. And then this is a pickaxe item. Now the great thing is we don't need to actually do anything else. We of course can change the attack damage and the attack speed here. This would be something that we of course wanted to do and wanted to test a little bit further. But the great thing is that the item tier actually already has the harvest level inside of it, so we don't need to explicitly state that again. Then let's get the amethyst shovel. Same here, shovel. This is a shovel item. Once again, it doesn't need anything else. Maybe no additional attack damage. Also a little bit less speed. The axe, this of course being an axe item, maybe a little bit more damage, but a lot less speed. And then last but not least, the amethyst hoe. Of course, once again, amethyst hoe as the name, and this is a hoe item. Right, and those are all of the registry objects that we need for our tools. Of course, it can be a little bit tedious putting this all in, but that's what we're gonna do. Luckily, we don't have any crazy JSON files. We only have the item model JSONs, and we're just gonna copy them over quickly. I had all of those, of course, prepared already, but they're actually very easy. Just as an example for the amethyst hoe, here it simply refers to the amethyst hoe texture inside of the textures folder, which we're also going to add in just a moment. Very important, however, for the tools is that the parent is item slash handheld. Then you will have the actually holding effect for the tools. Otherwise, you it will just look in third person like you were holding a normal item. But that's, of course, not what we want. We want the tool to be held. And then just quickly going through, as you can see, the other ones are literally exactly the same, just pointing to a different texture. Those textures, as well, of course, the JSON files are linked in the description below and available for you to use. Let's get the textures over as well. And even though it's not the most important thing, don't forget to add the translation strings to the en underscore us JSON file in your lang folder. It's just going to make it a little bit nicer in game. All right, once again, we find ourselves in Minecraft and let's see the tool have been added to the game. So let's just take them out here and let's just test them out for the sake of argument. As you can see, of course, the attack speed and the damage is quite a lot for all of them, but that's going to be uh, something for you to figure out in terms of balancing, of course. You will need to try out a few things. So let's see, the whole oryx totally fine. As you can see, the uses are going down by quite a bit. You can also see this works as well. The shovel is going great indeed. Let's dig down a little bit to get some stone. As you can see, I can get the stone as well. Oh, even got some advancements. Isn't that nice? I quickly went to look for a mob and there you go. There's a pig. So let's see. I think this should be a one shot. And indeed it is. Of course, I mean, that's 15 damage. That's going to do a lot of damage. But yeah, that that's basically how you add different tools to Minecraft. And I would say that's pretty cool. And this is it. This is how you add your own set of tools to the game. I would definitely advise to just play around with the numbers a little bit, especially with the mod item tier, try out a few things, see what will work. And that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I would of course appreciate a like if you did, and I will see you in the next one. So yeah.